Today, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, and verses 22 through 25, Jesus is standing before Pilate. He would let him go, but the mob is absolutely insistent, and this includes the leaders, the spiritual leaders of Jerusalem. Well, let's read on. 22, then he said to them the third time, why, what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, demanding with loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they requested. And he released to them the one they requested, who for rebellion and murder had been thrown into prison, but he delivered Jesus to their will. Well, that was what they wanted. Kill Jesus at any and all costs and let the murderer go. And that's what they got. That's what they got. So notice here what we have. There's really no charge. Why should he be, be put to death? There's really no nothing to sustain it, but they're adamant. And so it says, the voices of these men and of the chief priests prevailed. There's a lot on them, isn't there? There's a lot on them. They have been calling for Jesus, who is innocent of any anything wrong. He needs to be murdered. And now it's on them that, that Jesus is murdered. So Pilate gave sense that it should be as they requested. Verse 24, that's the the weakness of character. In fact, the weakness was seen actually at the beginning when he says, okay, look, he's done nothing worthy of death. I'll chastise him and let him go. I will, we'll, we'll, we'll give some, some physical torture to him and then we'll let him go. That little hint of weakness, I think, was an encouragement to the crowd, the crowd of, of demon-influenced people. And so now Jesus has been sentenced. He's going to go and be crucified, even though the, the man who sentenced him said, I see no reason to do this. So. There's some Roman justice. There really is no justice. There's no such thing really as, as any kind of religious or Roman justice or any kind of justice. There's no justice outside of God's plan. And so now they are going to crucify Jesus. Jesus is going to die, although he is an innocent. And they are murderers. But he's going to die, and he's going to die for them. Because if any of them would repent, he would give them eternal life. But anyway, things are looking quite, quite grim here. And yet, Jesus is going to rise from the dead after they kill him. What are you going to do about that, guys? Anyway, getting ahead of the story, but let's pray. Your Father in heaven, here we have Jesus on trial, and now he has been sentenced to death. And the, the words of the leaders have prevailed, and now Jesus is ready. He's going to go to the cross and be crucified the most extraordinary, torturous death that could be devised at that time, and that's what they're doing. They're treating Jesus just that way. Lord, if we recognize that all who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, and so as we see our master being crucified, we ourselves should recognize when we became a Christian, we didn't sign up for some kind of easy-going ride. We ourselves will be persecuted in, in different ways suitable for our situation. Give us strength to be True to you, God, all, all the way through. Now, Lord, thank you for Jesus, who is going to die this death for us to give us the gift of life. In Jesus' name, amen. So, friend, may his blessings come down on you. He died to give you life, and today you and I have that life because of Jesus.